Hi, this is Ali Arango of Little Guy CGI, and today I would like to show you how to make a rig that reacts to gravity. So let's get started. Okay, if this is your first time in Blender, I recommend you go to File, User Preferences, go to Input, and then choose Select with left click. Blender's default select is with right click, and this may confuse you if you're coming from Adobe programs or other 3D programs. Okay, while well you're in the user preferences, go to add-ons, put a check mark right here for 3D view, colon, 3D navigation, then scroll down. Then put a check mark next to pi menu, colon, 3D view, pi menus, as well as pi menu, colon, UI, pi menu, official. Okay, when you first come into Blender, you are in object mode. To navigate your view, if you click on your navigation tab, you can click these different views right here and quickly manipulate your view. You also can hold the middle mouse button to rotate your view. If you hold shift as well as the middle mouse button, you can pan your view. When you look here, you see this is where you can see that you're in object mode. If you click here, you have the ability to go into edit mode. So for now, I'm going to click here and go back to right view. Okay, this tutorial is about having a rig that reacts to gravity. There's different ways to do this. I'm going to show you one type of way to do this. I learned how to do this from a Blender Stack Exchange page where I saw a bunch of uh, people discussing this. However, when I looked to see if I could find a video uh, showing an example of what they were doing, I couldn't find one, so I said, okay, I'll make one. So here we go. Okay, basically what we want as far as this tutorial is to have this hat. When this character moves, uh, for this hat to basically react as if gravity were affecting the hat. Okay, what you see here is a mesh that I made up just for this tutorial. I'll put a link up here where you can get to a tutorial that will show you how to make something similar to what you see right here. Okay, as we start, we want to make sure that our cursor is directly centered. I'm going to click here to go to front view. You can see my cursor. This is my 3D cursor is off to the side. I'm going to hold shift and then while holding shift, press C. And then what that does is that puts the uh, 3D cursor right in the center of our view. When I say view, I guess it'd be more correct to say right in the center of our scene. Okay, so with the 3D cursor right in the center here, uh, I'm going to click right to go to right view. I'm going to hover my mouse here. I'm going to hold shift, and then while holding shift, I'm going to press B. This uh, will let us have a zoom box that allows us to zoom in. So, And what we need to do is... We need to have four vertices that basically kind of go along in the shape of this hat. Okay, in Blender, where your 3D cursor's at is where objects tend to come into Blender at. So I'm going to click, I'm going to right click right here to put the 3D cursor right there so that our first vertice should come in right here. Because we uh, had this 3D cursor be in the center of our scene, the 3D cursor should be right here as far as the view to the center. It also should be in the center of our, our scene. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hold shift and then while holding shift, press A. This brings up our mesh add to menu. I'm then going to go down to where we see this says single vert. And then I'm going to select add single vert. As soon as I did that, what happened was is Blender automatically brought us into edit mode. And there is a single vertice right here. Okay, so currently we're on edge select. I'm going to click here to go to vertice select. This is the proportional editing tool, which we're uh, not going to use. I had this on probably when I was making this mesh. So I'm going to press O to turn off the proportional editing tool. So with our vertice selected here, I'm going to hold control. And then while holding control, I'm going to right click here and then you can see that we just 
you know, uh, made another vertice right here. I'm then going to still hold control and then right click here. So there's our third vertice and now I'm going to still hold control and then right click right here. So there's our fourth vertice. Okay, now that we have these vertices made, we need to select our first vertice, which is right here. We then need to add these vertices to a vertex group. So we're going to click right here. It looks like almost like a triangle. When we click there, we can see this option here for vertex groups. This is what we need. So we're going to click plus to add a vertex group here. Okay, we're going to go right to this vertex group, right where it actually says group. We're going to double click here. We're going to change this name to pinning and then press enter to lock that name in. Okay, if you're not familiar with vertex groups, vertex groups are typically used to have Blender remember the part of a mesh of something. It's a, I use uh, vertex groups a lot of times to... Uh, reselect things in a fairly easy way. All of these uh, vertexes here are going to be part of this one vertex group, uh, just to be clear. So what we're about to do is we're going to put a, a weight on this vertex, a, a weight on this vertex, a weight on this vertex, as well as a weight on this vertex. There's going to be all different uh, weights for each vertex. However, all of these four vertexes are going to be part of the same vertex group that is called penning. Okay, we have this first vertex here selected. Right here you can see this bar that says weight. Think of weight as a way of making things one way. Weights affect things in multiple ways. One way is kind of like uh, the stiffness of an object. So for this first vertex, because this vertex is going to be basically dealing with holding most of this hat up. We want this uh, vertex to have a weight of one. When you see one, think of, instead of this saying, you know, 1.000, that often makes me think 1000. Think of this as being a weight of 100%. So we're saying that for this vertex, we want this to have 100% uh, weight, which you can think of it as having 100% stiffness. So with this here, we need to make sure that Blender understands that's what we want for this vertex. So to do that, we're going to click assign. So now this weight is assigned to that one vertex there. Okay, so now what we want to do is go to the second vertex. We just left click here. For this, we want this to have half the weight. So if, if uh, one is basically 100%, we can click here and then change this value to 0.5 and then press enter. And then this vertex here will have a weight or stiffness of 50% of this vertex, which had a weight of one or 100%. So we put the value in here. However, to make sure the blender knows this is the weight that we want. Again, think of weight as being stiffness in a sense. We need to make sure that we click assign. So we're going to click assign. Okay, now we're going to click this vertice right here, our third vertice. We want this to have a weight of 0.33. So we're going to click here and then enter in a value of 0.33 and then press enter to lock that value in. And when I say lock that in, I mean just so that, you know, this weight slider knows this is the value we want. To have Blender remember this, we need to click assign. Okay, so now we're going to select our last and fourth vertice. We're then going to click here and then enter in a value of 0.15 and then press enter to lock that value in for the slider. However, to have Blender remember what we're doing, we need to click assign. Okay, we are working on these four vertices. The mesh that you see here is another object other than these vertices. What we can do so we can just focus on these four vertices right here is currently we're in global mode. Global mode is where you can see all of our objects. If we want to focus just on these four vertices right here, we can go into local mode. And we can do that right here. See where it says view global slash local? I'll click this. And when I, I didn't click it yet. When I click this, it'll look like 
All of our other objects have disappeared other than the four vertices we're working with here. So we're going to do that now. When we did that, you can see, just like I said, the other objects disappeared. And when you look here, you can see that we're in local mode. If you open up Blender sometime and you're wondering what happened to your other objects, make sure that you didn't save inside of local mode because the other objects are there. They're just not in local mode. They're in global mode. Okay, so what we're going to do is press A to deselect. I'm then going to click here and then click here to go into object mode. Okay, we're in object mode. However, we're still in local mode. That's why you still can't see your other objects. So with this selected, what we want to do is go right here. I'm going to hold them in the mouse button and then pull to the side. Then I want to click here to go to our physics tab. Okay, what we want to do here is click cloth to add a cloth modifier to these four vertices. We then want to, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. You want to look right here where you see this says penning. You want to put a check mark here and then click here and then select the, the uh, vertex group that we made called penning. So I'm just going to left click here to select that. Okay, now with that done, when we click play here, we should see our cloth physics work on our four vertices. And there you go. So I'm going to pause this and then rewind back to the beginning of our timeline. Okay, now we have to set things up so that we can have this same movement of, uh, you know, how the cloth physics is working with the four vertices. We need to have that work so that that is applied to our hat, or so it looks like it's applied to our hat. So what we need to do is with um, this object that contains our, fir our four vertices selected, we need to click here, then go to edit mode by clicking here. Okay, what we're going to do is click here to select our first vertice. Basically what we need to do is have empties be right on top of all of these four vertices. So what we're going to do is with this vertice selected, we're going to hold down shift and then while holding shift, press the S key. This brings up our snap to menu. We're then going to choose cursor to selected. And then with our cursor right here, what we want to do is click here, go back to object mode. I'm going to hold shift A to bring up our add to menu. I'm then going to go to empty. I'm going to left click here. Then I'm going to select cube. Okay, with the cube selected, I'm going to press S to scale, 0 0.10, and then press enter to lock that scale value in. Okay, we now need to go through this three more times. So we're going to click here, click here, go to edit mode, click here, hold shift, and then while holding shift, press S. This brings up our snap to menu. We then choose cursor to selected. Because we have the cursor right where we want it, now we need to click here to go back to object mode because we want the empty to come into, you know, object mode. So now we're going to hold shift and then press A. We're going to uh, select empty, then select the cube. I'm then going to press S to scale, and then I'm going to press point one zero, and then press enter, and that scaled this uh, cube to 10%. So this empty is the cube. So now we're going to click here, then click here, and then click here to go back to edit mode. Okay, what we need to do is click here. So when we click here, Blender's like, okay, I see where you're looking at, right here. So then we say, yeah, Blender, hold shift, and then while holding shift, we say, we're going to hold shift, and then while holding shift, press S. This brings up our snap to menu, and we're like, put the cursor right there on that vertex. Uh, and then we choose cursor to selected. It does that. Since the 3D cursor is right here, we now go to object mode. And because in Blender, where objects, where the 3D cursor is at, is where objects tend to come in at, the empty comes in right exactly to where we want it. So we hold shift, and then while holding shift, press A. We select empty, then cube, and then we press S to scale, 0 0.10, and then press enter to lock that scale in. By the way, when I'm scaling these empties, uh, there are these cubes down, I'm choosing 0.10 as a size just because I like that size. 
don't think that for this to work, this has to be a scale of 0.10. It can you could leave it at that big sky, that big scale size if you wanted. I just prefer to have these empties scaled down like uh, this. Okay, so what we're going to do is click on our object that has our four you know, vertices in it. We're going to click here, then click here to go to edit mode. We're going to click here, hold shift, and then while holding shift, press S. This brings up our snap to menu. We're going to choose cursor to selected. We're then going to click here, then go to object mode. We're then going to hold shift, and then while holding shift, press A. This brings up our add to menu. We're going to go to empty and then select cube and then I am going to scale this down because I would rather this you know for myself to be smaller than the size it is so I'm going to press S to scale 0 0.10 which scales that cube to 10% uh, of what it was and then I'm going to press enter to lock that value in okay what we're going to do now is first we're going to click on our empty Order is important. First select empty, hold shift, then select your uh, object that has your vertexes in it. I'm then going to click here and then click here to go to edit mode. I'm then going to left click on the vertex that I uh, want this empty parented to. Okay, so now I'm going to hold control and then while holding control, I'm going to press P. This brings up our Make Vertex Parent menu. I'm then going to left click because that's what I want it to happen. So now this empty is parented right to that one vertex right there. So now I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to click here, then click here to go back to object mode. Okay, similar to before, we need to do this three more times. So I'm going to click here. Hold shift, then click here. I'm then going to click here, then click edit mode, click the vertex, hold control while holding control, press P, and then select make vertex parent to basically tell Blender, yes, I want to do that. See, I'd say an OK question mark. By left clicking, it's like, yes, Blender, I do want to do that. So now that's done. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to click here, then click here to go back to object mode. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to click this uh, empty right here. Okay, with that empty selected first, I'm going to hold shift, then click here. I'm then going to click here, then go to edit mode. Here in edit mode, I'm going to click on this one vertex here. I'm then going to hold control, and then while holding control, press P. I am then going to left click to say yes I want to make a vertex parent uh, you know parent the empty to that vertex so I'm left clicking so then I'm going to press A to deselect I'm then going to click here then click here to go back to object mode I'm going to press A to deselect okay I'm going to click first on the empty I'm then going to hold shift then click here I'm then going to click here then go to edit mode I'm then going to click on the vertex. I'm then going to hold control and then while holding control press P. I'm then going to select make vertex parent. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, what we need to do now is click this first vertex here. What I'm going to do now is hold shift and then while holding shift press S to bring up our snap to menu. I'm then going to choose cursor to selected. I did that because in Blender, objects tend to come in to Blender where your 3D uh, cursor is at. So I'm going to press A to deselect. And I can do that because my 3D cursor is right where you know I want it to be. I'm then going to click here, then go to object mode. I'm going to press A to deselect our object that has our four vertexes in it. So now I'm going to hold shift and then while holding shift press A. This brings up our add to menu. I'm then going to go to armature and then select single bone. Okay, with the single bone selected, I'm going to click here and then go into the edit mode of our bone. I'm then going to
Okay, I have to go back out. I'm gonna click here, go back to object mode. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna hold shift and then while holding shift, press S. I'm then gonna choose cursor to selected. I'm now gonna click back on our bone. I'm gonna click here, go to edit mode. And then with our tip selected here, I'm gonna hold shift. Then while holding shift, press S. I'm then gonna choose this time, selection to cursor offset. And then what that did was that made our the tip of our bone jump right to our 3D cursor, which was right in the spot that we needed it to be, which is right where the uh, empty is. Okay, so I'm going to click here, go to object mode, click here, hold shift, and then while holding shift, press S. This brings up our snap to menu. I'm then going to choose cursor to selected. I'm then going to click here, back on our bone, I'm going to click here. Go to edit mode. We need to have another bone come from here. So with this tip selected, I'm going to press E. So here's our extruded bone. From me pressing E, I'm going to right click so that bone jumps right back into place. Now I'm going to hold shift and then while holding shift, press S. This brings up our snap to menu. I'm then going to choose selection to cursor offset. So now this bone is right on top of the 3D cursor as well as on top of our empty as far as the tip of this bone. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to click here, go to object mode, click here, hold shift, and while holding shift, press S, choose cursor to selected. We're then going to press A to deselect, click back on our armature, click here, go to edit mode with the tip of this bone uh, clicked. We're going to press E to extrude, pull this uh, new bone out that was made when we pressed E to extrude, right click to get it to jump back into place, and then hold shift and then while holding shift press S, and then choose a selection to cursor offset. So now our bones are all in place, we're now going to press A to deselect. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to click here, then go back to object mode. I'm going to hover my mouse here, pull down a little bit. See this vert right here? This is the, the object that has our four vertices. I'm going to click this plus button so that we can see the different empties that are uh, parented to our different verts. Now what we need to do is with this armature selected, we need to click here and then click here to go to pose mode. So we need to add IKs, IK constraints to each one of these bones. So we're going to click here. We're then going to click here and then click here and then click inverse kinematics to put that IK stands for inverse kinematics on this bone right here. We're then going to click here, click here and then select inverse kinematics, then click here, then click here and select inverse kinematics. Okay, now what we need to do is click on the bone that we want to have its tip be set up for the target of uh, our empty. So long story short, this bone right here, here's the tip. This target needs to be this empty right here, which this empty right here should be empty two, because this would be the first empty, which would be here. This would be empty, or I should say empty point zero zero one then this should be empty, you know, empty point zero zero two, and then this should be empty point zero zero three. So with that being said, for this bone right here, we want to click target. We can either scroll down, which we'll do. So here is empty zero, empty point zero zero one. So we'll left click this. So now this is the target for this IK for this uh, empty. Also, while we're on here, we need to change this change uh, length to a value of one. Okay, so now we'll click this bone. We'll click target. Let's try putting E in. See, when we put EM, Blender's like, oh, you're looking for empty. So it just shows us now just the empties, which is very cool. So now we need to select empty.002. So we'll just left click. So now this bone has uh, 
MD.002 as its target, then we need to take this change length, cha blah, we need to take this chain length, length and change this to a value of one. So then we need to click here, then click here, we'll put in EM just like we did before. We want this to be the empty that is the target, which is empty 0.003. So we'll left click there. We'll take this chain length and change this to a value of one. Okay, now with that done, we'll click here. We'll then click here to go to object mode. We've been in local mode uh, all this time now, or for a decent amount of time. We'll now click here to go back to global mode. Okay, I'm going to hold them in a mouse button to rotate the view just to make sure that our our uh, everything is in the right place. And it isn't. It's off to the side. Okay, so what we're going to do is take what we have selected and push that towards the center. Be aware of what we have selected, which is our vert object along with the empties attached to it, along with the armatures. So what we're going to do is click here to go to front view. Okay, currently we're in front orthographic view. That's a good view to be in. As far as adjusting things, we're going to use our origin point right here to uh, see where we're going. So I'm just going to push this over. I'm looking here. Doesn't have to be exactly in the center, but... That looks pretty close to being the center there. Okay, so with that done, what we're going to do is I'm going to click here. We still have the armature selected as well. So I'm going to click here and click X-ray so we can actually see our armature bones. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, what we want to do now is click on our hat, hold shift, and then click on our armature bones. So first we, I just let go of shift. First we selected the hat, then we held shift, then we selected the armature bones, then I let go of shift. Okay, what we need to do now is hold control, and then while holding control, press the P key. This brings up our set parent to option. We're then going to left click with automatic weight and now we should have our hat mesh parented to our armature bones so I'm going to press A to deselect okay so what should be is now our hat should move just like our vertices move so let's see so we'll click play and there you go it looks like it is moving like we want it to move so I'm going to click here to pause that. I'm then going to click here to uh, take our timeline indicator back to frame one. Okay, so how would we go about using this as far as having this actually work with a, a character that we were moving around? Okay, so to show you that, I'm going to click here to go to front view. I'm going to pr press and hold shift then while holding shift press C that put our 3d cursor right in the center of our scene there I'm now going to click right to go to right view I'm going to hold shift and then while holding shift press a this brings up our add to menu I'm then going to uh, select armature and then select where I was on armature I'm going to select a uh, single bone while being on armature I'm now going to click x-ray so I can see that bone so there's a the bone that just came in I'm gonna hover my mouse right here I'm gonna hold shift and then while holding shift press B to draw a zoom box right here I'm now gonna click here go to edit mode click right here on the bone and then drag this back like this click the tip of the bone here I'm then gonna click here and then click W to bring up our specials menu, then select subdivide. And then I'm going to click here, put this down a little bit underneath the jawbone. A 
oops, I'm gonna right click, reposition that again. Okay, there we go. Just holding the middle mouse button to take a look. I'm gonna press A to deselect. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is click here and then go to object mode. Okay, to make things easier for us as we work, I'm gonna click here, press H to hide the hat. I'm gonna click here, then press H to hide our the main mesh of our face and head. Okay, now I'm gonna click on our armature, and then I'm gonna click here Go to pose mode, make sure I have this bone selected here, which is what I want these different things parented to here. I'm then gonna click here, go back to object mode. I'm gonna click here, hold shift and click here, 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 as well as here. And I did, I selected all of those while I was holding the shift button. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is hold shift and then click here. So now I'm letting go of shift and then I'm gonna click here, then go to pose mode. We, I wanted to go to pose mode, I'm gonna click here and then select pose mode, there we go. Okay, so, uh, with all of these things selected and this selected last, we're gonna hold control and then while holding control, press P, this brings up our set parent to option. We're then gonna select bone because I don't want these things to deform with the bone. I just want them to be, I want them to move with the bone, but I don't want this bone to deform those different things. Uh, so what should be now is that with this bone clicked on and I press R to rotate on the X axis, those things move, which is good because that's what we want. Okay, now I'm gonna click on our armature. I'm gonna press H to hide the armature. Okay, I'm gonna click on our armature again. I just want to make sure this bone is still selected. I'm gonna click here, then go back to object mode. The reason why I hit the armature was I wanted to be able to get to our vertex object. I'm going to hold them in a mouse button to rotate slightly. I'm going to click here and then I'm going to hold shift and then while holding shift, click here. Okay, now I'm going to let go of shift, click here, and then select pose mode. So I want to select this uh, object that has our four vertexes to this bone right here. So to do that, I'm gonna hold control and then while holding control, press P. This brings up our set parent to option. I'm then gonna select bone. I'm then going to click here and then click here to go back to object mode. Okay, I'm gonna click here, then click here to go to pose mode. I'm gonna press R to rotate on the X axis just to make sure everything is moving like it's supposed to. Now I'm gonna click play and then press R to rotate on the X axis and uh, it looks correct. I'm then gonna right click to get this bone to jump back to its original position. I'm then gonna click here to pause this, this being the timeline and then click here to get timeline to go back to frame one. Okay, now I'm gonna click here, then go to object mode I'm gonna hold Alt and then while holding Alt, press H to unhide our previously hidden objects. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click the hat, press H to hide the hat, click here H, 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 click here H. Click here H. So I click there, press H to hide them just to get them out of the way. It's now very easy to select and parent these uh, armature bones together. So I'm gonna click here. I'm now gonna hold shift and then click here. I'm then gonna click here, then click here to go to pose mode. So I want to have this parented to here. So I'm gonna hold control and then while holding control, I'm gonna press P. This brings up our set parent to menu. I'm then going to select bone. And then with that done, what I'm gonna do is click 
play. I'm then going to click here and press G and uh, things look like they should. I'm going to right click so that this jumps back to its original position then click pause here to pause our timeline. I'm then going to click here to get our timeline to jump back to frame one. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to click here then click here to go back to object mode. I'm now going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold Alt, and then while holding Alt, I'm going to press the H key to bring back our previously hidden objects. Okay, what I'm going to do is press A to deselect everything. I'm then going to click here, which is our main head mesh. I'm going to hold Shift, and then while holding Shift, I'm going to click here. Looks like I grabbed that hair. Maybe, I'm not sure. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to click here. Hold shift and click here. Good. So I clicked here first and now the armature. And as far as I know, I don't have anything else selected, which is good. So now we're going to hold control. And then while holding control, press P. This brings up our set parent to option. We're then going to select with automatic weights. Okay, so uh, with all of that done, what we should be able to do is click on our armature bone. So I click the first time, then get it. Click the second time I did, it being the armature bone being selected. And then I'm going to click here. Then click here to go to pose mode. Okay, so I'm going to click play, then click here. Press R to rotate on the X axis. Looks good. I'm going to right click to get that to jump back to its original position. Click pause. Then click here to get the timeline to go back to frame one. I'm going to click here to change the timeline in to be 500 by entering a value of 500 zero zero and then pressing enter to lock that in. Okay, so now what we're going to do is click play. And then press R to rotate on the Z axis. And our hat appears to be moving correctly. I'm going to right click to get that bone to go back to its original position. I'm then going to click here to pause the timeline. Then click here to get it to go back to frame one. Okay, I'm going to click play, then click here, then press G. Looks like our hat is moving correctly. I'm going to right click to get this armature bone to jump back to its original position. I'm then going to click here to pause our timeline, then click here to get the timeline to go back to frame one. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to, uh, here's our properties uh, panel. If yours isn't open, you can press N in order to open. If I press N, you'll see it close. I'll press N again. It brings it back. If I click or see where it says only render, if I click here, which I'm about to do. When I click here, this is going to put a check mark there. And what that does is that sets Blender to only render. So the uh, you know, armature bones and things disappear. However, what you had selected before you clicked only render is still selected. So I still have the bottom bone selected for the armature, even though you can't see it. When you want to bring everything back into view, you'll just take away this check mark so that your bones and things will render again so with this set now I'm going to click play and I still have this bone here selected so I'm going to press G so you can just see you know a little bit of how things are moving so I'm going to right click to get that armature bone to jump back into position I'm going to click here to pause the timeline I'm going to click here to go back I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view and then I'm going to click play again and then press G so you can see you can adjust the weight painting for the hat I'm going to right click to get this bone to jump back to its original position. I'm going to click here to pause the timeline, then click here to get it to go back to uh, frame one. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to uh, rotate the view. Hopefully you'll be able to use this technique for uh, different things like uh, dealing with hair or other things that would seem reasonable that you would need to have the rig to react to the uh, gravity or to uh, react to gravity as your character moves around. 
Okay guys, that's it for the tutorial. For all of those of you out there who like the videos on this channel and we share them, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And to those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel and you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing.